Well, and if we don't get involved in the culture from the word of God, who then is going to be the enforcers exactly. of uh, what pushback is there against anything Amen. the devil wants to do in society? If Amen. we don't get involved and teach our congregations to get involved in our schools and exactly. in the culture and in society, well, then who is stopping the devil's agenda? I mean, it's the church. We can't leave mm -hmm. that up to the secular right. conservatives if, if that's a thing. We can't do that. So it's us who are the enforcers. It was the Apostles Paul that stood on Mars Hill and, and, and confronted their witchcraft. Mm -hmm. He stood up there and said to the people, you're too superstitious. And they burned all their books yeah, and their artifacts right. and their magic spell equipment. But Paul and walked he, in the spirit. Because he, he was a spirit. man of the spirit. He, right. he was the same apostle in Acts 13, 13 that confronted the deputy's assistant, mm -hmm. the sorcerer, and commanded him to That's go right. blind, and I'm not suggesting we do that, but I'm just saying, Paul did that. No, we're the too nice. Is, what it is, is, is we're too nice towards evil. He, Paul yes, didn't put up with it. we're soft on evil. You're soft right. That's evil. a good way to this yeah. walking in the spirit. And I think, you know, God is speaking to all of us that we need to pull back and evaluate that, you know, because it, Jesus, if you think about this, this is, and this is why Hank and I are so passionate on this point, is... Jesus, when you read Matthew 24, all of the scriptures about end mm -hmm. times, which a lot of people are reading right now, but if you read that, Hank, Jesus said something so important on multiple occasions, I think like three or four times, he said, take heed that no one deceives you. Why? Because it, right sure. now, the culture has made the gospel seem so watered down. It's all milky. It's all kind of a blend of it something. Is. And where there isn't a separation, and yet the Bible that we read is filled with things about be separate, come out from among them and be separate, Amen. says the Lord, 2 Corinthians. It says, be separate, and then I will receive you. Amen. God is looking for us to separate and have a clear line of demarcation mm -hmm. from the world's ways, the world's attitudes, the world's mm -hmm. styles, the Amen. world's um, uh, belief systems, their ideologies. We're supposed to be so different right. that when people come to God, it won't be based on, well, I'm going to come be a Christian because it works for mm -hmm. me. No, they're going to come to a place of desperation where they want to come to the That's altar good. because they're, like you said earlier in the program, they're, they just, they're done with flesh. That's, they want to come to mm -hmm. a place where there's the spirit of God, Amen. there's the anointing. Right, they don't want that flesh anymore. So when people are done with flesh, they don't want to come to relevant mm -hmm. Christian center. They want to mm -hmm. come to a place where it's different than what they've had all their right. life. Right. And I believe that's what's going to usher in the last great right. revival, the great awakening is people who are driven and yeah, live exactly. in the spirit and it's obvious mm -hmm. in their life. And, and I guess that's why I'm so passionate right now and I'm so passionate on this program. You might think, well, you know, Hank, you're 56 years old and you know, you just, you know, got stuff in your craw. I, I've joked about that, but, but in all seriousness, no. I have served my Lord and my God since 1984, okay? I'm coming on 40 years almost of walking with God, being intimate with God, giving my whole life to please him, to honor him, to love him, to do what he says. Jesus said in Luke 6, 46, don't call me Lord if you're not willing to do what I say. And, 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 and I've lived a life, same with you, Brenda, where, you know, people would say, well, you guys are too radical, you know, in the, in the early years of our, our walk and our ministry. And yet I would watch them and I think, okay, they're calling me too radical. But yet when I look at their life and what they're saying is acceptable, I'm not judging them. Jesus said, you can look at someone's life mm -hmm. and judge their fruit. I'd be like, well, why do they, why do they think that that's okay to act that way, talk that way, or some of the things that they would, you know, entertain or, or bring into their home for entertainment or go to the movie screens and, and watch uh, by ways of entertainment. They all thought that it's good, yet I'm, I'm considered the radical one. But I realized something. It's because there's a, a war, Galatians 5, the flesh yes. against the spirit. That's, That's no what good. the scripture That's says. That's and I chose since 1984 with this girl when I married her in 1989, Brent and I set ourselves to be people who will absolutely do our best before God to walk in the spirit, to live in the spirit. 
And when you live that way and, yes. and, and it becomes your life, it becomes your walk, you will look at things of the flesh and it's like, I don't even want it. You know, it, it's amazing to me uh, how people, Brenda, will talk about just even Christian entertainment or things that Christians do to satisfy their flesh by way of entertainment. I'm not gonna get into specifics because I'm not here for you to pick apart whether you think it's right or not. But come on, you know what is flesh and what isn't. But but my biggest argument, and it's always what what we, we used to have through the years, magi- uh, musicians, mizi- musicians come in and they would all wanna play what they heard all the secular music play when we first started you know, and, 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 and all of that. And then they started wanting to sing songs that were, you know, Christian songs, but they never pulled you into the presence of God. And I, and I appreciated Pastor Christie and then later Shane, who she married, who would stand up and say, you know what, why can't we as Christians get before God, get an anointing on us and let God give us our own sound that comes from the spirit, comes from heaven, give us our own words. We don't need to learn always from the world's way. And I feel like it's it, it's it's like even with cartooning and what I'm doing with cartooning, I don't want to look at all the things that the world is doing right. to try to get my inspiration. I want to walk good. in the spirit, live in the spirit, be with God who is the creator in the spirit and let him give us inspiration that's, that's different than the world. I guess I, what I'm saying passionately, and maybe I'm not doing a good job, is I'm, I, I guess I'm at a place of righteous indignation and jealousy for God that I'm tired of preachers and churches and Christians defending so much of the world, carnality and flesh and think that it's approved of God. That's good, Hank, though. We have to hear that. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's, it's made us a wishy-washy, compromised, and even, I hate to say it, sinful people. And yet I look and I think, man, the preacher that stands up and says, you know what? Repent. The preacher that stands up and says, how does God feel about that? Or the preacher that stands up and says, you know what? I'm going to open my mouth for the sake of this country is now ridiculed and called a Christian nationalist because they love God and love their country. They're tired of the flesh. They're tired of the evil. They're tired of the culture being pushed on the church. They're tired of preachers that'll stand up there and ignore what God said and and and, and marry uh, against traditional marriage. And we let that get creeped into our church because we're trying to reach people. I think somewhere we got to raise the standard. And I think the way that we do it is you walk in the spirit, you live in the spirit and you will recognize the difference between yes, good and good. evil, that's right. holy and profane. And you won't be this religious bigot. I'm not talking about that or this religious stuck up person. Yeah, right. You'll have a way about you that will be pleasing to God and attractive to others that they will say, wow, these men have spent time with Jesus. That's what I want to be said of Christianity today. There's something different. What is this about Jesus? Man, we want to be like you. But when you're trying so hard to be like the culture, they'll never say that about you. Yeah, right. You know, I want to, you know, I walked in a place the other day, Brenda, and I'm not trying to brag, but I walked in a place, we're going to bring this to a close. And um, the person said to me, this was several months ago, they said, man, they, they were just talking to a group of people. And they said, man, when you walked in, what is it, wh- what is it about you? you? And I said, what do you mean? And they said, you brought so much energy, I guess is what we would call it. You know, they don't know what it is. It's the presence of God. They said the whole room just changed. And I thought to myself, God, that's what I want. I want to walk in the that's spirit we all be. and I live in the spirit, yeah. but I want to carry the tangible presence of God that people say, mm. you know, you almost convinced me like, uh, who is that one that Paul the, preached? With Paul, so Paul, right. You, you almost convinced me to be a Christian. What is it about you? What do you have that I don't have? You know, what is it about the standard that you have? That's why on social media, I am one of these ministries. I don't let people come and barf their flesh on my social media page. If you can't walk in the spirit, if you can't live in the spirit. If you can't act uh, in the fruit of the spirit and, 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 and comment correctly and write, and you bring that spirit, goodbye. We got to pull this thing back for the sake of what Jesus is coming back for. You can throw all your eschatology scriptures at me that it's Gog, Magog, Mm -hmm. Ukraine, China, Russia, eggnog, you know, or whatever you want to do. But 
but the truth of the matter is the church right now, and I'm not saying this to hurt God. I'm saying this because I believe that he feels the same way. Right now, much of his church is divided, argumentative, fleshly, mm-hmm. dishonorable, right? Lazy, not spiritual, not walking in the flesh or, or walking in the spirit. This isn't an escape mission. The scripture says he's coming for a church without spot. That's right. Without blemish and without wrinkle. And that is those that are walking and living in the spirit. And then it says he's coming back for a glorious church. That is a church walking in the spirit. And that's why I feel so passionate on this today. I really do, Brenda. Well, I feel like. uh, From the Lord today. I feel like, and I just sense this right now that you're watching. And I I feel like the people connecting to this broadcast, this service, you're doing it because you you feel that way. You're yeah. like, God, Amen. we've got to pull this. And I believe it's going to take all of us as an army, as a people of God. It starts as a person, as an individual. And then it, it it's us as a church. You know, that's our passion here at Lord of Hosts Church. But it should be all of Amen. us. And I really believe this is something I want to encourage us tonight to really pray along these lines that God... Let us be the light that will help bring a new standard to your people. And and like Hank said, it's not in a self-righteous way or anything like that. That's not the point. But the point is, is when you recognize there's a lot of deception that has infiltrated the church. You know, the scripture says judgment has to begin at God's Mm -hmm. house. And I think you're here because that is how you feel. Or maybe you realize, man, Pastor Hank, what you said, I've got to do some examining. We all do. We all have to do Brenda that. Brenda and I included. Brenda Every and I, single one yes, of us needs to look are. at our standard because Amen. so much has bled into the church. And I feel just, I want to pray this pray over you right yeah, now. That's beautiful. Father, in the name of Jesus, first of all, we thank you. Your word says there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after, watch this flesh but after the spirit. So Father, I pray that every person under the sound of my voice, you will raise their hunger for a new spiritual standard. And even if they are walking in the spirit, Father, we know there's always higher levels for us to attain to, to step into, to be hungry for, to desire. We can all grow. And I'm asking you, Lord, teach us how to be people of the spirit and do it with taste and grace, but not Lord. compromise. Amen. And if there Thank be any Lord. compromise in us, we ask you tonight, Lord, forgive us. forgive us, show us, reveal to us where we can make adjustments and changes because Lord, we do Thank believe you, you are coming back for a glorious church. And I Amen. just pray over the people right now. And I say, whatever your need is, whatever you're dealing with in Thank your Lord. life, whatever you're facing, I believe God is going to show you the answer He's going to show you how to get through it. He's going to show you how to overcome it. God's going to do that right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, thank and you, if there's anything that's between you and God, just get rid of it. You can repent Amen. of it. And guess what? God's going to come on the scene and he's going to bring you back to that. Good and if Lord. you're backslid or you're away from God, just mm-hmm. repent and say, Lord, forgive me. I come home. Thank I'm you. home. And guess what? God is there for you. So I just speak a blessing over thank you Lord. right now. And I say, you, you are going to get to the place in God that is in your heart and God himself is going to bring you into total victory in Jesus name. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. All right. Wow. Very good. Thank you for what praying for What a word them. tonight. Yeah. Uh, just, oh my goodness. I know. And I'm so happy you ended it by praying for these. Yes. People. It's just a good word. Thank, thank you. Thank you I yeah. want to say for just being a bold voice and always yeah. standing up and just speaking the truth. And I think it's needed right now you know why, in this Brenda, church. Something is driving my heart. And I want to say it to you. I read in scripture uh, recently where the Bible says, God said about himself that he is a jealous God. Yes, he did. And I said to the, to, to the father at that point, I said, Father, I am on a uh, mission to discover what it really means that you are a jealous God. Mm. And if you're a jealous God, I am going to I'm going to ask you why, I'm going to discover why, but here's the thing. I am going to come to that level where I am jealous for you like you are jealous for what you've said, who you are and what you expect of yeah, us. That's good, that's good. And so I'm on a I'm on a journey to discover okay And I think if you understand that God is jealous, then you're going to want to know why. God, why are you jealous? What are you jealous about? And and I think that uh, 
Very good. That's what my passion is. I know. You know yeah. That's good. So 